my hour, I want to show you everything that you do. So I think that it's, it's a bit hard. Please just wind me up and we'll get in close. So uh, I don't want to cut too much into today's time and I would really like you to have Dave out here for the LA Clippers. So uh, I want to give him as much time as possible. Uh, so I want to show you everything we do. There's a real reason for that. I don't have much time to put together a national team and I've got to work quickly so it can't be complicated but I would like that every coach of young players in New Zealand has got a way that they can do what we do to some extent and I don't prescribe you to run this play or run that play but that, that's up to you because you know who your players are. So this goes behind the plus. And in fact that was our whole thing. This was called the play behind the plate. And there are seven principles to the play behind the plate. And what that means is that, sure, we can come down and we can call the set play, we might score off it, but the percentages suggest we probably won't. So what happens after that? The part after that is when we want them to be really good. Or if the game was just chaotic, and we came out of transition and nothing was really set up, could we just go and score? And I wanted the girls to be really good at the play after the set part of it and finish. And that takes concepts. It doesn't take structure. Right? But also, what I do, we work with simple rules that hopefully an under 12, under 14 coach could look at what we do and go, you know, that will apply. And my experiences, so I've been coaching for, for 30 years and you know I've been able to coach a lot of wonderful players that have gone up to the levels where Dave's coaching the NBA and stuff. The game's still a simple game and it's still a fundamental game. And we've got to do it really well with how we teach the kids to play. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. The first concept that we want to aim for is spacing. And why is spacing important? Spacing is important because the game is changing. Now, a lot of people that I've spoken to here, uh, particularly the girls basketball in New Zealand, is to get a first big player down to the front of the rim and posting up. Usually two post players and three guards. Our two tallest players are going to be the inside players, that kind of stuff. The game is kind of changing now, where we want more people outside the three-point line and more people learning to shoot three-pointers. Because when they're outside and everyone's a better shooter, then the keyway is open for more dribble penetration. So spacing is our first key. Right. And what I mean by that exactly, I'm going to just show you, like we have one, two, three, four, five of you guys have caught with one ball. I want one of you each in the corners, one inch in the corner, one player with the ball out of half court. Thirty-four. Uh, 
they struggled to shoot 14% as a team from the three-point line. So dramatic change. I'll give you one more set. This time, we'll have you as our post man. We'll put you down low to begin with. Um, you go up to the wing to pass the ball to the wing man. You cut through the basket for me. You go to the top, pass the ball to the top. Take a dribble over and throw it to that wing. Right, you come up and set a screen here. Cut off that screen. My guard, pop out, go to the corner three. And as the ball's been thrown to the top, sprint up and set that screen again. Alright, so that was at the end of a play. Spacing out, further out. So right back to those same positions. So where we kind of started the play is also where we can end the play. Right, with great spaces, so we're aiming for that. Three players, four players, always outside the three-point line. Okay, guys, have a seat for me. Moving quickly on, our second principle related to that is shooting the ball. Now, you can buy DVDs and books on shooting that are hours long, right? very complicated methods. So I want to be able to teach and make a profound difference to shooting ability with simple rules. Uh, now, the first rule, uh, keep the ball up. You can go to all this space, see it on your chair. Put your hand underneath the ball like you're going to finger all the balls in the basket. Do that in a way where the seams are horizontal. So the first rule that we have is to rotate the seams of the ball. What I mean by that is that when we practice our shooting, the seams should rotate quickly and perfectly <coughs> horizontally go to shoot the shot. Right. If we can learn to rotate the seams of the ball when we let go, we know that the ball is coming straight out of our hand. Right. And that's a really big thing to do. Right. So for a finger roll, turn the ball up to your shooting position where you would shoot the shot from. And now see if you can shoot the shot for yourself, straight in the air and catch it and do the seams rotate perfectly. Off you go. You'll see that there is a difference between an ugly spin and a pretty spin. I would tell the players all the time, we want a beautiful or a pretty spin on the ball. Now they're practicing their release right now. All the best shooters can get a perfectly straight and fast rotation of the ball. Some players, the ball doesn't rotate at all. Right? They're not putting enough snap on the ball with their wrist. Right? So we're after rotating the seams. It was amazing for me how many players in the national team they let the ball go and it's very crooked out of their hand. Okay. Now, I know that for junior girls basketball that there is a real issue with a ball, lack of strength, and a basket that's 10 feet high. So that's a real problem. And we've got to, we've got to divorce the outcome, which is the basket, from the process, which is learning correct form. And we certainly do not want them to have to heave or throw the ball to get it all the way up to the basket. That is a real problem. And it's very, very hard to break that habit down. And always the telltale sign that gets you out of the way. You come over here and stand up and see the patient can see. And uh, you think you're all the ball for me, the seeds are straight, so you've got that point down. You'll always remember that. Turn the ball up. Okay, so. We say, if we start with a finger roll, we turn the ball up, you will see that she's got a gap between the back of her hand and her upper arm. Right. We cannot lose that gap. And a really good way to reinforce that with your players is that another basketball should be able to fit into there or close enough. Okay, so what happens with the majority of junior girls players that gap collapses to generate a shot put and arm power, and then the other problem is that shoulders turn to get that going. So we have to coach that away. So what if we start in a finger roll, seize a straight, we turn the ball up. Now, I don't care when they're younger, they'll let it, that'll be a little bit lower, but now it's got to be lower body power. So bend and push, bend and push, and keep that gap. Okay, now, the basket is still a long way up there. So how might we begin? Particularly if they're really nine or ten years old. 
And you can do the same thing to rotate the scenes by just here. We'll keep the same thing because we're learning to risk it. We want to rotate those scenes straight. Now our other really good way of doing this is we'll move our player, come up here, hurry up. This one's a bit tough, it's really skinny. But we'll see if we can have her shoot the ball onto the side of the backboard and have it come back to her with the seam straight. So turn it up, just see if you can shoot it against the backboard. Yeah, the back, yeah, the side of the backboard, exactly what you did. It came back to you. Right. And or shoot to a part. Because those things, if, if we do that, it divorces the, the outcome, which is, I just want to make the basket. To the shooting form, right? So really important for us to do. Thank you, have a seat again. So first thing we have to do, first of all, is rotate the seams. The second point is we have to teach our players to shoot a straight line. Now what does that mean? Okay. All of these guys here will have a dominant finger or fingers where the ball will come off their hand. So I know for Australian basketball, our greatest men shooter ever was Andrew Yates. He was our Kirk Penny. Andrew used to always say the ball came off his index finger. He could really feel the ball. So he directed that finger to the middle of the basket. Right, I like to work from the top down in the shot, not from the bottom up. Our greatest female player, Lauren Jackson, who was a multiple MVP of the WNBA. Her feel on the shooting hand was that the ball came off the middle finger to shoot the ball. Right, I love watching Clay Thompson from the Golden State Warriors shoot it. He started introducing, he said, well, it's both. It's a fork, a shooting fork. I can feel the ball come off both fingers and they directed and dictated uh, the shot. So you guys have to know what is your dominant shooting finger or fingers. Right, can you stand up again? Let me come over here. And when she shoots the ball, so this time, just space the coaches. So go back to your finger roll, turn it up, and shoot the shot. Is that we want to have that dominant index finger, because that's what it is for her, pressing hard, pressing hard. Right, so do your drill work and get them to feel that finger presses hard, or well, this finger presses hard, or well, they both do. So the instruction that we get to uh, reach for the cookie jar, all that kind of stuff, which I was taught when I was younger, is, is not what we really want. Instead, we want an idea that those fingers are pressing towards the middle of the basket. Okay, now you go back to that position for me. Right, and once we see that that finger is pressing straight, what you've got to look for as the coach is that finger in line with wrist, elbow, shoulder, hip, knee, toe. And that's your, that's your shooting line. Okay, so as I go around the country to the clinics, I watch people shoot, and it could be that the follow through is over there or over here, that's really common. Or the elbow is not locked out and it points to the side here. Right? So we don't have that rifle barrel straight shooting line. Or another really common error for the girls is that knees will buckle in. And our toes aren't pointed in the correct position. So we want to shoot a straight line. Okay, so rotate the seams is one. Shoot a straight line is two. And the point we've got to understand is what is our dominant shooting finger? We'll coach that. And the third thing is that we have no guide hand. So this is the, the devil's form. The guide hand is the devil's form. And the biggest problem that it has is that it turns to thumb flick. Right, so the left hand comes in to play with the shot. Or else it follows through excessively. And we can't have that either. So how do we correct it? Right, two ways we correct it. Start your finger roll again, seems a horizontal. Right, excellent there, we're not collapsing, we're going to use lower body for the power. Okay, now let's say we've got the ball in the straight line, everything's good. The guy hand goes into the ball, but we're finding out that it's a thumb, he's a thumb flicker. So I'll take a coin, like a two-dollar coin. It's the women's program, it's probably a 20 cent coin. All blacks, it's a two-dollar coin. Come on, man. And that coin will stick between index finger and thumb. And he's got to hold that coin there and then shoot the ball. And the impact of that will be, you'll be so
so concerned with holding that there that the shot will just be released, I'll be shooting air and through, right? Because we want our guide hand to finesse the ball. We can't have it flick and follow through. If you don't have a coin available, you can take their thumb off the ball completely and just have them hold with the, the four finger pads of the left hand. So just put your finger pads, no thumb, and hold there. Or else, you can just use two to one finger. Because that's the point of your guide hand. It just holds and guides the ball there. We want the shot to be coming completely out of the shooting hand. So how we start here, that's how we want the shot to be without any influence on that guy here. 